Welcome to another Getting Started video for Octopus Deploy. This video will help you learn more about creating releases and deployments. First, there are a few definitions to get out of the way. A release is a snapshot of the deployment process and the associated assets such as packages, scripts, and variables as they existed when the release was created. When you deploy a release, you are executing the deployment process with all the associated details as they existed when the release was created. Now we will jump over to the demo instance to show how to create a release and deployment. Let's get started on creating the first release and deployment from our Hello World project. This video assumes you have a project and environment created as well as the deployment process defined. If you do not have those items, please click on the annotation which just appeared in the top right corner of the screen to start with creating an environment. In addition, there are links in the description below to the appropriate videos. Let's kick this off by clicking on the big Create Release button. Give the release a version number such as 2020.1.1 or 1.0.0. Octopus Deploy expects SEMVER for the release version. Though not required, you can also provide release notes when you create a release. Release notes support Markdown so you can include links back to tickets, customer requests, check-in notes, and more. Click the Save button to create the release. Creating a release will snapshot the deployment process, variables, and much more. This ensures no surprises when a release is deployed to production. The primary philosophy of Octopus Deploy is how you deploy to dev and test should be how you deploy to production. Click the Deploy button to navigate to the deployment screen to set various options. Here you can select when you want to deploy this release to this particular environment. You can deploy it now, or you can schedule it to deploy at some point in the future. It doesn't make much sense to wait, so we'll change it back to now. You can also exclude certain steps from the deployment. We only have one step in our process. It wouldn't make much sense to exclude that. Clicking the Deploy button will start the deployment. Once the deployment is started, you are shown a task summary screen. This gives you an overview of all the steps which will run and their status. On the right side of the screen, you can see the release notes provided when the release was created, the task history also shows when the deployment was started as well as who started the deployment. Clicking on the task log will provide further details for individual steps. For successful deployments, this information is not very useful, but any error messages will appear as well. Setting the log level to verbose will show much more information to aid in debugging. That's it, you've completed your first deployment in Octopus Deploy. Now it is your turn to create and deploy your first release in Octopus Deploy. Here are some items to keep in mind as you do that in your own instance. Releases are snapshots in time. Changing the deployment process will require you to create a new release. Clicking the Deploy button will place the deployment into the task queue. The system user is the user that picks up the task from the queue and does the deployment. And finally, leave the log level at info. If you need to dive in further, download the task log or open up the raw task log in the UI. Links to additional resources as well as links to contact support can be found in the description below. Thank you for watching.